You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network. For more quality options programs, visit www.theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app, available in iTunes and on Google Play. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at twitter.com slash options, facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider.com. Welcome to the options playbook, the program where we break down cutting edge option strategies and explain how you can incorporate them into your own portfolio. Whether you're looking to grow your capital with some offensive maneuvers or protect your investments with defensive plays, you can find them all in the options playbook. The Options Playbook is brought to you by Ally Invest. Anything mentioned today is for educational purposes and is not a recommendation or advice. Options involve risk. Please refer to ally.com slash invest slash disclosures to review additional risks involved with trading options. Securities offered through Ally Invest Securities, LLC, member FINRA and SIPC. Now, let's open the playbook and get started. Welcome to Options Playbook Radio. I'm your host, Brian Overby, Ally Invest, Senior Options Analyst and author of the Options Playbook. Well, last week we looked at a skip strike butterfly in Amazon, uh, our normal trade around that date. It was very straightforward. Uh, we did it for a nice little credit to the account. And guess what? Amazon went the opposite direction of what we thought it would. In other words, we were kind of hoping it would go up a little bit and it went down. So we made the net credit. It expired worthless. Move on. So now this week, uh, we're starting to run short a little bit on earnings. There's still a lot of companies that are being announced, but a lot of the big names have already announced earnings. Um, I'm going to look at a trade that's going to be next week. And as always on Options Playbook Radio, uh, we uh, nothing is intended to be a recommendation. But I was specifically looking for a decent, decent known company. Uh, PepsiCo is what we're going to be looking at, Pepsi. And I wanted to have them announce earnings on the Thursday after the close or, in this case, Friday before the open. So there is only one day's worth of trading. And the strategy that we're going to look at is called a diagonal call spread. So there were limited uh, availability for this week's trading. And I should let you know that we are taping Options Playbook Radio right now on the 6th of February. It is a Wednesday and the markets are closed. So. The stock that I found to be able to, and once again, we're always on Options Playbook Radio, we're not looking for uh, forecasts on stocks or whatever. We're just trying to think of strategies and scenarios where these option strategies might work. So we don't care about the underlying. We don't have an opinion on the underlying because we're not here to try to be a great stock picker. We're trying to learn about options in different scenarios. So in this instance, we're going to look at Pepsi. They are going to be announcing earnings on the 15th, which is a Friday, and they're going to announce them before the open. So we're going to do this diagonal trade specifically because on the 15th, the option that we are going to be selling only has one day to live. There's only one day's worth of trading, and that's fairly big to us. And what we're going to do is we're going to concentrate on Delta. We're going to look at the expected move, and we're going to use all this to try to set up an interesting diagonal trade around an earnings report in a fairly decent-sized company like Pepsi. I went fairly decent, a very decent-sized company, I should say. All right, so... Once again, this is I would not do this trade today, but it I mean it's feasible if we were gonna do a paper trade. And since it is a paper trade, you might as well you can put it on right now and then you can put it on uh the day before on paper, like all of the intended strategies that we look at on options playbook radio are. Um so here's the scenario. We have uh February 
15th expiration, and that right now is nine days away. I would look to do this on the Thursday before the earnings get announced, before they get announced Friday morning, which means you would only have basically, well, one full day of trading. So right now with nine days remaining, the stock is at 113.05. I see the uh, 113 strike call and put, basically the long straddle, is now trading for $3.10. We're going to go approximately $3 away, and we're going to sell the 116 strike call. So that's right about where the expected move is after earnings. That call right now is trading at the midpoint. We're going to call it 44 cents at the midpoint. We are then going to go out further in time, and we're going to go to the February 22nd expiration. That is 16 days away. And we will buy the 117 strike call, one strike above, and that is trading at the midpoint. We'll call it 34 cents. So this entire net credit to the account is about 10 cents on this trade. Stock's at 113. We are going to be doing a short credit spread, but we're going to be doing it in multi-months, and hence the name diagonal, because we're going to have two different expirations. And if you look on the quote board on the trading floor, that means you would be looking diagonally at the quote board, and hence that's where the name comes from. So a net credit of $0.10 cents to the account. The width of the spread is $1. So in this instance, if we are wrong on our forecast, we are short the front month and long the back month, and the maximum we could lose is $0.90, cents, $1 minus the $0.10 cent net credit brought in. So that is a diagonal spread around earnings. Now let's talk about the strikes that we have that that we have chosen, and let's talk a, a, a lot about why we chose them overall. So if I look at the delta of the February twenty second call. That delta in this instance is 16 cents, and the delta of the 116 call with the February 15 earnings is about 20 cents. So they're fairly close in delta, they're four cents difference, and that's important to me. I want to make sure that if I do this trade, and the market does gap open, basically, the expected move, or three points, that I'm really not going to get hurt that bad on the trade. And my whole goal is that the 116 call expires or deflates almost instantly after the earnings announcement, and that leaves me long a call option for, an, for a week basically for free, right? We did it for, we're hoping to get this done for a net credit of a dime to the account. And it's a $113 stock, so it's a, it's a, a good price stock because we do got some premium just because of the price. Uh, it's not an extremely volatile stock, so I, I like that it's got some volatility, but it's tough to have any predictability after earnings, but we got a little something, something. We're not doing this in Amazon, for example. And... Uh, my whole intention is to try to make sure I get this done with a very low net delta to me, and I want a long call basically for free is what my whole goal is. I want to get long a call for free. So one point wide short spread is really what we're doing here, but we're doing it diagonally. So we're not bringing in a full credit to the account for doing this. And we are looking at the deltas. We are trying to see we have basically a delta. The, the difference between the short option 
has a little bit higher delta if it goes against us. And the difference on the long option, which has a little bit lower delta, and that's only four cents. So we're really paying a lot of attention to delta and also to the fact that we can still get this done for a net credit to the account. So what happens if a market goes straight down? Well, just like any short call spread, well, we make the credit received. So in that instance, we would make the, the 10 cents. We'd still be long an option. Uh, the short option would expire in one day. We'd be long the other option contract for another seven days. And we could choose to hang out and, or see what we can get for it and do whatever we'd like. If the market opens kind of flat, well, that's a, a great scenario. Market opens, let's say, a point or two as opposed to the expected move of three. And then in that instance, once again, the short option expires worthless. And uh, we are just long an option contract that we can decide what we want to do with. And lastly, if it opens up above the expected move, well, we're instantly just going to get out of the trade. There still will be a little bit of premium. The market's going to go against us. But we're, we're fairly neutral on our delta. So it's not going to absolutely kill us. The worst case scenario, we would lose 90 cents on this trade if we got out on the day they announced earnings. Um, so I would expect to lose less than that in overall on the trade. And uh, if it gapped open four or five points, I would just try to close the trade, get out, and move on to the next trade. So it's a scenario a lot like the skip strike butterfly that we did last week in Amazon. Um, and it's a very simple, straightforward scenario. There are many different situations that you profit from as opposed to what you lose from. And the, the biggest way that you can lose is if you get a gap open more than the expected move. Now, question is, can that happen? And the answer is yes, it definitely can. It has happened to me even with skip stripe but butterflies on Amazon. So there's always a scenario where you could get a gap opening bigger than what the marketplace is expecting. Um, so just be aware of that. It's not like it's not plausible. You don't want to bet your entire retirement savings on this type of speculative option trade because of that. But we have, if the market goes down, the market stays flat, the market goes up a little bit, all three of those scenarios, we're okay on this trade. So uh, with that said, let's do a quick recap of the diagonal. Okay. Once again, we are taping Options Playbook Radio. It is the 6th of February. It is a, a Wednesday. The market is closed. PepsiCo, uh, PEP is a symbol, last traded at 113.15. They are looking to announce earnings on the 15th, which is a Friday. They're going to announce before the open. We looked at the long straddle for that February 15th expiration date, and that is currently trading for about $3. And that's the expected move. It's actually about $3.10. So we went out about $3 away. We sold the 116 call that expires on February 15th and the end of that day's trading. And then we went one strike higher and one expiration out and bought the February 22nd expiration 117 call. We were able to get this done for a net credit to the account of 10 cents. We did create a margin requirement, though, because we are short the closer to the money strike, the 116 strike, and long the 117 strike. So in that instance here, we have a one-point wide margin requirement that is going to be created. Our maximum risk on this trade is that 90 cents. The maximum upside on by the first expiration is only 10 cents in this scenario. But with that said, we our whole goal is that the front month would expire worthless and we, we remain the long month for another week and we just kind of see what we can get uh, from our quote-unquote free option contract if the front month option expires worthless. All right. That's it for this episode of the Options Playbook Radio. If you have a topic you'd like us to discuss on the show or a question you'd like us to answer in the program, you can send them directly to me at theoptionsguy@invest.li.com. Thanks for listening. We'll be back at the same time, same place next week. Until then, may all the options you bought finish in the money and all the ones you sold finish out. 
The Options Playbook is brought to you by Ally Invest. Anything mentioned today is for educational purposes and is not a recommendation or advice. Options involve risk. Please refer to ally.com slash invest slash disclosures to review additional risks involved with trading options. Securities offered through Ally Invest Securities, LLC, member FINRA and SIPC. The preceding program was a production of the Options Insider Radio Network. For more quality options programs, visit www.theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app, available in iTunes and on Google Play. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at twitter.com slash options, facebook.com slash the options insider or via questions at the options 